It was about this time last year I got around to playing a game that I had barely looked into prior. A game made by British studio Rare that's usually glossed over when people talk about the company. That game was grabbed by the ghoulies, and going into it, I didn't know what I'd be in for. But going out, I wanted to go right back in. I'd be correct in assuming most of you haven't played this game either, and I've only heard it mentioned when people talk about the Microsoft buyout. Because it's the first game to come out of it, of course. It's gotten a little bit of a bad rap since then, but allow me to share my experience of this game with you all, because really, this game deserves to be talked about. The story of Ghoulies goes as follows. On a dark and stormy night, we find Cooper and his girlfriend Amber lost in the countryside looking for civilization. They soon stumble upon the mansion of Ghoulhaven Hall, owned by certifiable madman Baron Von Ghoul, and before you know it, Amber winds up getting kidnapped. It's now up to Cooper to try and save her, but Ghoulhaven isn't your typical spooky looking mansion, filled with all sorts of monsters, oddities, and more of an adventure than you may have bargained for. And with that, the adventure begins. Now there's a lot of stuff to cover, but I'll go over presentation first, because it makes itself immediately apparent. Ghoulies has the cel-shaded look of games like Wind Waker and really embraces that style. As a result of its unique approach, the game looks as good as it did when it first came out, if not better now that Rare Replays got it in high definition. Everything in this game just pops out. The colors, the textures, and you know, I never talk about lighting, but it helps give the house a lived-in feel while adding to the spookiness of it all. Just looking at this living room, I can can almost feel the heat coming off from the fireplace, and I mean that. But Ghoulies doesn't just stop at visual flair. Most people know that Rare's got a great sense of humor, and dare I say it shines brighter than ever here. Ghoulies doesn't take itself too seriously, and it's all the better for it. I had a smile on my face five minutes in, and found myself laughing at just about everything, especially when things got violent. See, the game is a beat-em-up, and it takes its brand of violence to a brutally silly level. I mean, Cooper himself, he's a bit of a loser, but he's not messing around when he needs to throw down. He uses melee attacks, pool tables, frying pans, you name it. This is slapstick at its finest, and it really won me over. One time, I uppercut a skeleton through the window, and I had to just stop and take a breather because I was laughing so hard. I don't know what it is, but when someone goes through a window, I lose it every time. Gets me every time. <laughs> Going off of that, let's talk about the gameplay. As I mentioned earlier, Ghoulies is structured like a linear beat-em-up kind of game. You go in a room, you take out a set of baddies, rinse and repeat, but it's all executed pretty unorthodox. For example, most fighting is done with the right control stick, and in my experience, that's only ever been used for camera controls, and the actual camera controls are the shoulder buttons. A bit awkward at first, but once you get the hang of it, it works just fine, and makes the game very easy to pick up and play. There wasn't a need to memorize different combos like with other brawlers, so I could just enjoy the carnage that was going on without worrying about how I was doing it. And where the controls are simple, the gameplay is surprisingly layered. Every so often a challenge will present itself which has to be completed if you want to move on to the next area. Failing a challenge doesn't mean you have to start over though. It just brings out the Grim Reaper, who if he catches you, kills you with one touch. But sometimes you can use that to your advantage as other ghoulies aren't safe from his judgement either. There were a number of times where I said, you know, I don't really feel like following the rules right now, let's just bring out the Reaper and be super Super careful. It's a high risk, high reward alternative when it presents itself, and there's even some occasions where you need to bring him out. There's a serious bit of strategy from this element alone that really impressed me. And side note, you may not be able to kill him, but you can beat the crap out of him for a bit, and that's pretty satisfying too. But the minute you stop, you run. For the challenges themselves, they can range from doing something in a set time limit, to killing all ghoulies, killing no ghoulies, and your health varies in each room too, thanks to the Baron. As things progress, rules can get stacked up on each other, making things sound pretty wild, but there's always items and power-ups scattered around to make things less stressful. Some power-ups are hidden, and there's also some that can screw you over, but it feels rewarding finding the right ones for the job when you do. Lengthwise, the game isn't terribly long, but there is a lot of replay value. Every area in the game has a bonus book to find, 100 in total, but don't stress trying to get them all in one go. You can go into any chapter, any level you've played through before, and get the books that way, so backtracking is a non-issue here. Collecting 5 unlocks one of the game's bonus bonus challenges, of which there are 20 to complete. Dare you go for platinum rank for each one, they will keep you busy, but like regular room challenges, there's ample help to beating each one. Completing a challenge unlocks some bonus content, and getting all the platinums lands you something pretty special too, but I won't get into that. I'll let you discover that for yourself. One thing I will go over is this game's music. Banjo-Kazooie man Grant Kirkhope's behind the soundtrack, and of course it sounds great, but what makes it truly special is how varied it is. It's easy enough to do a song with a haunted house vibe, 
or one that fits a specific baddie, but every track here gives off an atmosphere from both and they're all extremely distinct. I can't imagine how tough that must have been, but Grant really pulled it off, complimenting each enemy while keeping in line with the game's monster motif. From the skeleton theme, to the zombie pirate theme, right down to vampire chicken even. Every single one is just spot on. Another aspect that brings this game together is its strong sense of character. Everybody you meet in this adventure is memorable for one reason or another. Enemies, allies, even the house itself you go through has this certain charm to it. One of my favorite characters has to be groundskeeper Fiddlesworth Dunn Fiddlin, and he is, he is a dirty man he is. A well-meaning guy, but you read his dialogue and half of what he says is just ripe with innuendo. And it's not reading in between the lines either, they meant to do this. Goodness sakes, he's got a nephew named Little Willie who owns a water gun you use in the game, and apparently Willie's got an eye infection too! He's just nasty, but he's still a riot. And the best example of character, I can't forget to mention this, when the Reaper kills you, he does an air guitar solo. Almost like he's saying, oh ho, 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 I love this job. It managed to make dying something to look forward to, and he's just so likable for that. So I've been saying nothing but nice stuff about ghoulies, which might make you think to yourself, why was this game hated on? Well, I think I know why. Again, this was the first rare byproduct to come out of the big Microsoft buyout. Rare's audience was also divided between the GameCube and the Xbox, and I'm willing to bet a few fans were expecting something more ambitious from them with their new partnership. They were probably like, all right, Microsoft bought Rare for a lot of cash. Let's see what big AAA game they got coming out for their brand new system. And were sorely underwhelmed with Ghoulies, which is pretty modest compared to something like Banjo and didn't really fit in with the Xbox crowd. Had this come out on the GameCube as originally intended, I'm sure it would have been received a lot better. It should have just been another Rare game on the system, but with the buyout, it had some big shoes to fill that it just couldn't. And I will fully admit, I was on the rare hate train like most people back in the day, and I too flung mud at ghoulies. Obviously, I should have given it a fair shot before being judgmental, because in the first half hour of playing, I was saying to myself, wait, people didn't like this? But with age comes knowledge, among other things, and I now understand where this game came from and really appreciate what the folks behind it created. And now that the dust has settled a bit, I hope others can appreciate it for what it is instead of what it had to be. Grabbed by the Ghoulies is not the biggest game in the world, it's not the longest game in the world, but it is a lot of fun. This is definitely something I would have played when I was younger, alongside stuff like Battle for Bikini Bottom and Scooby-Doo Night of a Hundred Frights. And in a day and age where everybody is trying to one-up each other with exclusive DLC, insane file sizes, day one patches, blah blah blah, it's really refreshing to just play a good old game like Ghoulies that's simply about having a grand old time. Not to mention it's perfect for the Halloween season, or since I missed that, any season really. So if you're looking for something that's not afraid to be unabashedly silly, something that's rare in every sense of the word and haven't played it yet, definitely give it a shot. If not just to uppercut a skeleton through a window. Thanks for watching everybody, I really hope you enjoyed what you saw, even though Halloween was a while back, but uh, better late than never I suppose. So if you did enjoy, feel free to give this video a like, share it with a friend, subscribe, check out my social media links, all that good stuff. And while you're here, feel free to check out the videos on screen, I did a new Did You Know Gaming recently, all about Banjo-Kazooie, and I also helped a friend of mine over at Beyond Polygons with his What Makes a Game Unique series. He's currently covering Pokemon, so take it from me, it's great. Give it a watch. And with that, I will see you guys next time. Later! You might be a king or a little street sweeper, but sooner or later you dance with the Reaper. <laughs> Get down with your